It made me appreciate life and it made me want to be do things for the greater good. It does look like he, you know, is living with a regret when it comes to her. My man could have, would have, all that look good for the media. In times of bereavement, celebrities typically express their sorrow and fond memories of a departed loved one, receiving an outpouring of love and support from fans and friends. Yet the aftermath of Kim Porter's passing revealed a stark contrast in Diddy's response. Recent revelations have brought to light what appears to be a disingenuous display of grief, prompting fans to question the authenticity of Diddy's sadness and remorse over Kim's tragic demise. So, what exactly did he say? On the top of the year, I was like going through like a real like dark time, and I was like really depressed. Six months after the demise of Kim Porter, Diddy graced the May 2019 issue of Essence magazine, where he spoke about his grieving process. I would be just like walking around crying just all the time, he told Miami. It just hurt so bad, you know what I'm saying? I was just like not moving. I had like isolated myself, you know? It was definitely, it was rough. I really could not control crying. I would be anywhere and just any memory would just get me and really break me down. Additionally, Diddy allegedly felt remorseful for being unfaithful to Kim when they were together. The betrayal really affected Kim, Diddy said, before admitting that he feared that he may lose his best friend at one point in their relationship. As time went on and Diddy was able to face his new reality, he championed his religious connection as the factor that pulled him through. Talking to God is what really got me through it, he expressed. I had a wonderful life and time with Kim. I have beautiful kids. I'm just like the luckiest man in the world to even have had the experience to have her in my life. However, Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene, laughed at the appearance of grief Diddy puts up about Kim's death. He said, Diddy broke Kim Porter's nose one time. You used to be a WB, he said, referring to Diddy. Talk about how you used to beat Misa Hilton. Talk about how you tried to beat Kim's A. Gene was asked about a song Diddy released titled Kim Porter, and Gene replied, I think that's a great thing to do for the woman you claim to love. Then laughing, Gene added, to honor the woman who gave you a scar on your wrist for the rest of your life that you could always look at and remember. He added that if Diddy ever tries to forget Kim, all he has to do is look at his wrist. Recounting the incident, Gene said, He wanted to, you know, put his hands on her in the wrong way. And Kim took one of those corkscrews and ripped his wrist up and hit an artery. Gene added that their relationship was violent and Kim was not allowed to be with anyone else. Kim could not be with nobody else and he knew it. And he could do whatever he wanted to. You know what I'm saying? And uh, even when he was with J-Lo. He said that Diddy could make it very uncomfortable if Kim tried to move on with anybody else. The interviewer then told Gene that it appears Diddy now regrets subjecting Kim to AB, but the ex-bodyguard said the rapper was just doing it for the public. It does look like he, you know, is living with a regret when it comes to her. My man coulda, woulda, all that look good for the media. Anyway, despite Diddy's poor attempt of wanting to appear remorseful, some of the people who are in Kim Porter's life are convinced that he had something to do with her demise. And one of those people is her ex-husband, Al B. Sure. You see, this old wound was opened up when Diddy's ex, Cassie Ventura, filed a civil lawsuit against the music mogul. Cassie entered a relationship with Diddy at the age of 19, while he was 37. According to her legal complaint, their relationship took a dark turn soon after, with Diddy allegedly becoming controlled and physically AB. Cassie disclosed instances of him forcing her into situations with other men, terming these encounters freak-offs. She claimed to have coped with these distressing experiences by using substances. The lawsuit outlined specific incidents of physical AB, including Diddy entering Cassie's apartment against her wishes and kicking her in the face, persisting even when his security team attempted to intervene. Cassie maintained that such AB occurred on a daily basis, contributing to occasional memory loss, a claim supported by her former personal assistant, who witnessed these events. Ely Banks added to the allegations, asserting that Diddy flew Cassie to Hawaii for a three-week vacation to hide the facial injuries he had inflicted. The lawsuit also delved into Diddy's jealousy issues, highlighting a scenario where he threatened to blow up Kid Cudi's car after discovering messages between Cassie and Cudi. This threat reportedly materialized the next day, when Cudi's car exploded in his driveway. All this chatter has dredged up Al B. Shure's claims from 2020 
nearly two years after Porter died from lobar pneumonia. As he wrote in a since-deleted Instagram post, I just found this footage from the morning I learned of Kim Porter's murder and how it ripped the soul from my physical body. I was on my way to film the pre-show packages for the BET Awards with Tisha Campbell Martin and Tachina Arnold when I received a call from PR icon Queenie Donaldson asking me if I was okay and did I hear the news. I had no clue. I do know very clearly that Kimberly didn't just check out all of a sudden over pneumonia. That's some BS. Really? This is where I get in trouble. Al B. Sure never explained what led him to that conclusion. But the court of public opinion has its theories. As someone tweeted, but when Al B. Sure was saying something happened to Kim Porter, nobody wanted to listen, then he got sick suddenly. Y'all should have listened. They rekindled before she passed. What's even shadier is that just before Kim died, she was writing a tell-all book to expose Diddy's dirty secrets. However, right before she could release the book, she wound up dead. Just like Cassie, many people close to Kim reported that Diddy used to mistreat her and had her hooked on so he could control her. Meanwhile, according to credible sources, Kim allegedly took proactive steps to caution Cassie about the dangers of her relationship with Diddy. Kim, having experienced the tumultuous side of a connection with Diddy herself, reportedly tried to advise Cassie to sever ties with the influential figure as swiftly as possible. This concern stemmed from Kim's understanding of the challenges Cassie might face in the relationship. Crucially, it's essential to bear in mind that during this advisory exchange, Cassie was a mere 19 years old, while Diddy, a powerful figure in the industry, was making enticing promises of a highly successful career. Diddy went a step further by extending a complete record deal to Cassie, leveraging his position to allure her into the prospects of fame and fortune. In the face of such alluring offers, Cassie, like many young aspirants, may have overlooked the warning signs and chosen to stay in the relationship. This narrative gains additional credibility when considering Cassie's legal claims. In her lawsuit, Cassie attested to the fact that Diddy employed a coercive tactic, using threats to manipulate her into compliance. Specifically, he warned Cassie that any attempt to leave him or divulge details about their relationship would be met with the full force of his influential connections, with potential consequences including her exclusion from the industry. In any case, after Kim passed away, people first thought it was because of pneumonia. But then, some started to wonder if the pneumonia idea was just a way to hide the real reason she died. The investigation into Kim's death got more complicated, making it seem like there was something mysterious going on. People started asking if the whole process was fair and open. A person who played a big role in this was Ed Winter, the coroner assigned to look into Kim's passing. He said he found harmful substances in Kim's body, but surprisingly, he died not long after making this revelation. There's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been- This made things even more suspicious, as it happened just when he seemed close to finding out what really happened. To make things more puzzling, at the time of the autopsy, they replaced Ed Winter with another coroner. Changing the person in charge made people doubt if everything was being done properly. The new coroner took a surprisingly long two weeks to confirm that Kim died from pneumonia. This made people raise their eyebrows because usually, it doesn't take that much time to figure out if someone someone had pneumonia unless they were trying to hide something important. At the time, people wondered if someone purposely wanted to change the direction of the investigation. They questioned if the new coroner faced any pressures or instructions that influenced what he found out. All these uncertainties make it hard for people to trust that the investigation process was fair and honest. Meanwhile, in light of all these allegations, some law enforcement sources told TMZ that there is an active case with the name Sean Combs. The case was described as very sensitive, since it allegedly details all the other SA allegations made against Diddy. However, after this info was leaked to the public, the NYPD denied any existence of such a case. In fact, an NYPD spokesman told Daily Mail, Yesterday, a member of the NYPD's Public Information Office erroneously told a reporter about the apparent existence of an active case file containing the name Sean Combs. There is no such investigation at present. Further, the release of such information is not consistent with the internal policies of the Office of the Deputy Commissioner, public information. However, we all know that sometimes the police can deny the existence of a case. You see, in the eyes of the law, someone accused of a crime doesn't have the right to know if the government or police are investigating them. The main reason for this is that if information gets out too early, it could mess up the investigation. When the police are looking into a crime, they usually don't want the person they're investigating to find out. This is because they're worried the person might hide or destroy evidence or try to influence 
influence the people who saw what happened. Keeping things quiet makes the police's job easier. Another reason for keeping investigations on the down low is to avoid unnecessary confusion. If everyone knows about an investigation, there can be a lot of talk and rumors that aren't true. This often happens in big cases that get a lot of attention. The police might get a ton of information, but most of it isn't helpful or trustworthy. Additionally, just because the police are looking into something doesn't mean they'll definitely arrest someone or charge them with a crime. That's why the police usually do their investigating quietly before telling everyone about it. So, maybe the NYPD might allegedly be trying to gather as much evidence as they can before formally charging Diddy of anything. In any case, the question of whether Diddy will face charges remains uncertain. However, given the mounting evidence against him, it seems increasingly likely that the music mogul could soon find himself entangled with the legal system. Anyway, that is for this video, folk. Bye.